Today, yeah, I will speak about Docs inclusivity. That might sound weird, uh, joining Docs and inclusivity together, but it's from a Windows user perspective. So uh, what we will see today, okay, I will quickly speak about me, why am I doing this talk? Um, then we will go through, in my terms, let's say, uh, on Doc inclusivity. What are the challenges, but always keeping the positivity, so how we can help also. And if everything goes well, potentially, I will not sink with the boat, okay? <laughs> So, uh, first of all, who am I for the ones who don't know me yet? Uh, I'm Nuno Do Carmo. I work as a tech writer for Sousa uh, since six months. Um, I'm a Portuguese living in Switzerland. I love a lot of things as hobbies, and I'm proud owner of four cats. Yay. During nighttime, however, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. So during nighttime, however, I transform kind of and I become what I like to call myself the WSL Corsair or the Corsair itself. Uh, I love Cloud Native, I love Docker, literally. I blog a lot about it. You can follow me on Twitter. And I'm proud owner of the ad you can see there, which is uh, given to me by Brian Kettleson. The recognitions are just like. Thank you, community. So, before we start our journey, I will do one promise, is that I will not speak about a certain subsystem, for the ones who know me again, of Windows. I know, that's shocking. So, when we write docs, the main challenge is, is that potentially we have assumptions. One of them, is that big enough? It seems small, sorry, okay. Um, one of them is that Windows, currently, at least, is by far the most used OS in a desktop for any user. User, okay? However, when we come to developers, the trends, well, even though it's still the most used, it's way less now if we combine Linux, uh, Mac OS, and others. Okay, not way less, but it's less. Okay, so suddenly the developers seem to me not that much represented as a user compared. So the cloud native docs currently, when we go to any website, potentially, that I went through, when I get to the examples, due to the developers being in other systems, right, it's the docs are more likely, or the, the examples are more likely written in Nix format, right? Uh, Mac OS or Linux. So curl this, pipe that, GQ, or whatever. So this brings some feelings that the users from Windows, right, well, feel a bit like Linux gamers. So who is a Linux gamer here? Well, one person, because he has a Steam Deck. But, <laughs> but okay, but you feel the pain over the years, right? You know what I'm talking about. So, well, Windows users now feel the pain of the Linux users, right? And in the cloud native perspective, projects is like, okay, it seems to, that we have a disinterest from the Windows users, right? We are still the most common ones, but representatively in cloud native, it seems that we are nowhere somehow. So the problem is the same, but we are looking at it from different perspectives, okay? And the, again, the feelings are different. And of course, because of these feelings, then we have an impact. The impact, first one, is again, like I said, that cloud native projects somehow lack Windows examples or support, okay? Many friends call me from time to time and ask me like, okay, can you train this person or can you explain how to do it maybe in PowerShell or the other thing that I should not speak about? And well, 
from a Windows perspective then, a Windows user perspective, when I go to a website and I try something, then I find it hard to translate. So I found your projects hard to use. It might be not the case, but that's, again, that's the impact. So talking about the same thing, but again, not understanding each other. So here is like a personal view. So I call it from a Windows user because I'm one, but that's a personal view. So at the very, let's say, at the very beginning, I see a cool demo from you all, right? I see, wow, so cool. So then, then I discovered your project and I'm like, okay, I should test it. Now I go and read your blog posts because I know you document your stuff. Right? You document your projects in either blog posts, videos, it's out there. I know how to find them. Then comes the first question, does it run on Windows? Yes, no. Are the examples englobed with PowerShell examples? Because I'm from Windows, right? And finally, trick or treat. Well, too bad, no Windows example, maybe the next project or maybe their next iteration will come with the Windows, uh, uh, let's say, examples, or hey, you did your work and actually I have a Windows examples, binaries, and I can use your project, so I can contribute also. Let's take a concrete example, shall I? With the, let's say, the first step, Kubernetes. So I went, you cannot see it, it's normal. <laughs> It's a full page, but I went to Kubernetes and let's say that I want to install kubectl. The first doc here, you cannot see it, but it's using like PowerShell. So I have the example of PowerShell. Cool. Then I want to go a little bit deeper. kubectl as a shell uh, autocompletion. Well, there's no PowerShell. That's, and by the way, I will rectify it after, but let me just go through the example. So there's no uh, there's no PowerShell like, uh, auto-completion. That's bad. The good thing being in cloud native and open source projects is that we can then create an issue, right? And ask, well, can we get the PowerShell auto-completion, right? So rectifi rectification. Nowadays, it's done and PowerShell <laughs> has kubectl auto-completion. So that's good. When I did the slides, initially they didn't. It, it was like six months ago. So, with all that in mind now, let's switch now for what I call the three layers of doc inclusivity. That will take what I saw so far and how we can maybe transform it. So, the first step that I see, of course, in all projects is potentially if there's binaries and release notes. Okay, so we are all using some kind of uh, GitHub or GitLab uh, repos, so normally the binary should be there. Is there a Windows binary? Yes, no, yes. That's on the good side, so I mean I can use your project already. Potentially there's no installation docs. So just question for, <laughs> for you to answer yourselves. Tell me where I put Windows binaries to be executable like user being in Linux, right? There's no answer. We don't have that. If there's no installer, it means that I have something on my pass. Pass on Windows is not as easy as pass in, uh, on, uh, on Linux, right? And suddenly, already, like, just the installation can be complicated for some Windows basic user, let's say. So that's already a good room for improvement. If you have a Windows binary, try to think about the in Windows installation, how you like it, okay? Then you have release notes, definitely. But then release notes, and I say like no examples for Windows, but potentially you don't have even examples on release notes. So we are missing something there. So what you think you built, this is where what we see from a, a Windows perspective. So we see the, the inverse of the, of the scenery, right? So then, in terms of docs, so now we move away from the repository itself, we go to your docs website, and potentially it covers all the layer one. 
So it means that he has the Windows binaries, he has the release notes, you have some installations, examples. But then your Windows, let's say, example or documentation sometimes comes as hidden. Okay, they're there, but they're kind of hidden. They're not like as present as the Linux counterpart, or even are just a note. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm talking about experience here. So suddenly it's like a small note, oh, for Windows, don't forget to run your PowerShell in administrator mode, right? But it's out of nowhere. It's, it has no, let's say, um, real, uh, I don't know how to say, but there's no real story here. It's just suddenly just a note dropped. So the thing is like, if you write documentation for Windows, then assumption here, which is bad, but assumption is that you have some sort of Windows knowledge. And the problem is like, you have Windows knowledge on potentially a certain version, Windows 10, Windows 11, pre-2021, uh, H2, H1, we don't know. So suddenly Windows, that was like, okay, we are unified, we are not like Linux where you have forks all over the place. Well, today you have a chaos from Windows XP that are still used somehow to Windows 8, to Windows 10, and finally Windows 11. So this brings actually that your docs for Windows might just target your person that knows about Windows and it will be one version. So in your docs, we built something really nice. Okay, so we have now a, a great doc site, we have documentation. The problem is like, we don't know who will use it and might misuse it. Have you tried to go with a Bugatti in a... <laughs> anyway, so, oh, cool, so sorry. We, I will talk about this one after. Uh, so the last bit will be the command. So command is like, you have your commands, right? So let's say that you have, again, layer one, layer two are covered. So now we have everything. We have the doc sites, we have the examples, we sure about us. But then what happens is like, does your, it's in the good, but it's still a question. Does your command output brings Windows example, right? When you do something like, I will take a, a concrete example here, which is K3D. Uh, K3D is Windows or Windows compatible. We can run K3D on Windows, but then suddenly when you install a, a cluster with K3D, now I think they fixed it, but before it was like, okay, everything goes well, Windows, it, it says Windows everywhere, and then suddenly the last output is only Linux based because it has some command that you have to run on Linux. Okay, it's not. So think about also after you built all that, go back to your actually binary and think about like, what are the outputs? Do we have examples there to help, right? So it's not a, a place to, to be better, but uh, okay, cool. So for example, when you think about Windows, and Linux parity, there's, let's say, tip and tricks, right? One of them, if you look at uh, especially uh, Linux, we like to do, you don't see it, but I will share the slides, or the slides will be shared normally. So you have the kubectl uh, minus minus and uh, EOF, right? And then you can put your YAML, and then you press enter, or EOF, enter, and done, right? We have actually a parity for PowerShell. It's written there. It's a bit different, but it's still, complies with it. So the PowerShell users can still just take your YAML and put it in a command line directly. A second example, our dear friend kubectl and JQ. So JQ, don't get me wrong, JQ is fully compatible with Windows. There are binaries there. But once again, where do you install JQ? Do you want to explain where to install JQ during your own project, right? So here, what we can do is that instead of piping it through GQ, we actually have the JSON pass directly built in from kubectl. So you can simply, or simply is not simple, but you can like change the approach. 
okay, I talked about all that, but I mean, changing your docs and everything sometimes might be difficult. So some, you need help, right? So that's, nakama means friend in Japanese, by the way. So that's why. <laughs> so first of all, the first help that you can get is to choose actually a doc environment. We have many of them, Ugo, to mainly name the, maybe the most known one, and then we have something called Docusers, I will speak about it later on, or after just that, and MDBook, MKBook, or MKDoc, sorry. All these layers here, all these frameworks use uh, Markdown. So there's a kind of standard already to, uh, in, in terms of language, okay? And then if you want to migrate from one uh, framework to another, Markdown is your friend. Just be careful, just mine. Sometimes you have like what we call ad admissions that can, um, can be different between the frameworks. Then, when you are asking to people to help you on your project, maybe they don't want to install Ugo, maybe they just go to your uh, GitHub or GitLab and they try to edit directly the file, but it will be nice to have a rendering, right? What I call the preview. So here is not a shameless plug because I don't work for them at all, but uh, Netlify uh, has a really neat preview and I guess others have to, right? So it previews your PR and so you can see if uh, nothing is broken and anything, but, and the persons writing the docs or contributing to your docs don't need to suddenly install the whole framework, right? So here, it was for one of our projects. You will see here in the deploy preview that it creates a, a link. You just have to click, it's in line in your, uh, in your issue, so it's really easy also to use. Then in terms of content, your docs are great, but sometimes I have the same questions, where do I start and where does it end, okay? To help you order that, we have something that I discovered while working at Suze. I didn't know about it, but it's called the Divio Paradigm. It's, uh, it's a way of ordering, actually, documentation between tutorials, how-to guide, explanations, and references. Uh, I will provide, like, it's docs.divio.com, but uh, in between, you see, like, these lines it tells you like, is it more technical? Is it more professional? What should go where? And the docs suddenly get an order that are also easy for you to maintain. Finally, not finally, sorry, uh, the storytelling. That is a bit personal now. People like to have technical documentation. Others like to know how to use it right away, so your quick start, let's say, and others want to even understand what for. The storytelling here, for me, was the best one. Like, I will start here, and where does it, this project leads me to do, okay? So there's a story. Here is Nuno that wants to deploy a Kubernetes cluster and deploys an application on it. With our tool, how do you deploy the application? how it goes, and step by step, okay, you have a trail. And your users, at least the first time, they don't get too much lost. Then, of course, you have to have your technical docs, right? So these are more developer-oriented. If you have CLIs, if you have like uh, APIs, then it's up to them to go there. But the user might not be a dev, okay? Finally, Try, and it's the hardest one, try to not have assumptions. Your knowledge is not universal. For what you think it's simple, easy, just have to, these words, right, are already an assumption that you think that the person that will be reading your documentation knows as much as you. So try, again, maybe with storytelling or not, but try to bring the persons with something like a background. First, here is the prerequisites. You have to do that before you start, okay? Even just links, look at this one. 
but don't assume that the person already knows where a binary is installed, how to use it, and so on. The second friend, of course, is the community. So I put here Windows OS users to feel welcome because my talk was more about you, uh, Windows users, but it can be like any user. Make your users feel welcome into your communities. I know you are doing already a great job, right? But sometimes there's not judgment, but it's more like, okay, do you have an example for that? Oh no, we don't. And stop there instead of trying to bring them. Oh, but why, what do you need for it, right? I don't say it's the case, I just, let's say, just to mention it. And cloud native, at least how they presented me, is OS agnostic. Well, that's pretty much Linux agnostic for me, but okay, we'll get in there. <laughs> then, Windows knowledge sometimes is not shared. Like, many times I go to communities, Slacks, or something like that, and everyone knows how to do something in PowerShell, like the, the two examples that I provided, right? But they keep it kind of for themselves. It's not documented anywhere. And now the next community member comes and maybe he or she, them, don't know it. So try to encourage also that Windows is not that bad. If you know something about Windows, we can document it. Especially the command line. Yes, Windows users use command lines, by the way. <laughs> Finally, market your docs. Okay? Think about docs first, if, if you can. But market your docs. It's good first issues. For people who know me from back in the day, I didn't know how to help as non-developer in cloud native. And everyone that helped me told me, start with our docs. Look for typos. Look for ways that you can improve potentially. And I start using their projects and I start contributing. And that's how I get started. But there's like a building, right? If I don't know that you have good first issues, then for me it will be difficult to know how to help. Okay, she was just saying like, we welcome everyone, even Windows community. So that was the video. I will give the link. So, to complete the last part, let's say that how you can help, again, my slides are all messed up, so let me just do this like that, okay. So, content. Check your own docs. Look if there's some assumptions in some parts, especially the quick starts sometimes. Okay, the quick starts, we think, let's say, inverse. Quick start is like, explain less and you can get your project running in five minutes. Cool, but if you don't have prerequisites, then it, it can be either five minutes, it will be half hour or one hour. Review your examples. Can they be more generic, like the GQ? Okay, can I use more like the, even though it's maybe not the best way, as you do it on your daily job, maybe it's the best way to share. Promote your docs and tag issues, okay? And one last thing, allied. So, if your project by any means cannot run on Windows, it's still okay. We are out there, we can help you with, okay, WSL2. So, starting Windows 10 or Windows 11, there's the subsystem for Linux, I won't speak too much about it, but there's the subsystem for Linux, and your projects can run there. And if you don't think they can run there, Challenge me on Twitter. I'll find a way. That's what I've been doing for the past years. So <laughs> I'll bring your project to live on WSL2 on Windows, potentially. Okay? And I'm not alone. That was it. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>